Hello there and welcome back to the Master Moldy channel. Now, initially, this video was going to be me predicting sets next year based on their prices. But don't worry, that video is still coming out in probably a couple of days at time. Instead of doing that video today, I wanted to take a look at the new set images we've got so far as of recording this video. It's only Battle on Peridia and the Desert Skiff and the Sarlacc Pit. But hopefully later on, you will also see images of Jedi Bob's Starfighter because, well, if we don't get images today, I don't really know when LEGO are going to do it. It's a month before that set is supposed to release. So I'll record that later on and I cannot wait to see what that looks like. But as I said, we've got Battle on Peridia and the Desert Skiff and the Sarlacc. And there's also a lot, lot better images of the C-3PO, which I think we'll start off with. So I've set up this brand new camera angle so you can actually see me and the screen because I know some of you would rather focus on the images. Some of you want to see my reaction to some of these images because especially the new sets, they look pretty awesome. And this kind of gets the best of both. So C-3PO is a set that we've already looked at on this channel and a few of these images have popped up but there are a few new ones. We get a lot clearer images as you can see they're a bit bigger on the screen and we don't have to zoom all the way in but when we do zoom in we do get confirmation that that is a dual molded leg on C-3PO. So I have already checked that but this is the image that absolutely blew my mind. This C-3PO scales with the £90 R2-D2. That is awesome. And not only that, I can't remember if R2 actually comes with one of these 25th anniversary plaques. It would be a bit strange if he didn't. I guess he comes with Maluk, so they come with the base instead of the plaque. But these look awesome together. It does total about £200 to get the both of them. But I think this would look awesome on display especially behind me next to the Disney castle. This is going to be so tempting not to pick up one day because I really, really would like to get both of these. And you also get the Darth Malak with R2-D2, which is a really cool figure to pick up. But here is the image that I was talking about. You get the dual molded leg on 3PO. You can see it's dual molded because the printing is slightly off on that right leg and not quite as close in as it is on the left. So it's funny that they have used, I assume it's a render, all of the Lego images tend to be renders, so it's funny that they've used a misrendered image, or perhaps they are switching to actual photos of printed legs, because this whole right leg is printed slightly too far to the right, and this is the exact same minifigure that comes in the Land Speeder. Let me know what you think of that down in the comments. But there's a few other images that we've already seen. And we also see the plaque for C-3PO, the display stand with C-3PO information plaque, which I guess is a display stand because you can also put C-3PO on it. A few bits of detail. He's a protocol droid created by Anakin Skywalker. He's 177 centimeters, so it's nice to know I'm a bit taller than C-3PO. He's affiliated with the Galactic Republic, the Rebel Alliance and the Resistance. It lists under equipment Trilang 3 communication module, which I guess is his protocol droid voice box. And then capabilities, he is fluent in over 6 million forms of communication. Well, it's a bit more than that because he ends up speaking Sith as well in the sequels. Now, I've already mentioned for the figure what they should have done to make him exclusive is include Anthony Daniels head. Even if they still include a C-3PO head, give him an exclusive look with the Anthony Daniels face and hair, but I can completely understand why they don't want to link this droid to a actual person because it does break a bit of that Star Wars universe feel. Now for one of the two new sets, we have set 75396. It does definitely sound like I'm listed off a clone trooper number when I'm saying that. Desert Skiff and Sarlacc Pit. I'm happy it looks the way it does because it's one less set that I'll be wanting to pick up. The skiff itself, I should have a... I've got my old skiff here and you can see similar pieces on the front. But whereas that is about two pushing three times the length, this is closer to three pushing four times the length. It's an extra however many studs that is. That is about eight studs, so it's definitely... Only going to size up to be about this big, I think, by the looks of it. 
which is smaller than minifigure scale. This one's actually minifigure scale. I had no idea when I had the set, so that is why I haven't broken it apart, because it does scale to most of the other ships that I have built, including LEGO's very own 2019 Anakin's Pod Racer, which, you know by now, that is what I base my minifigure scale on. So if you have the old one, I don't think there's really a reason for picking this up. Perhaps the biggest reason for picking this up in general is the minifigures, but the minifigures aren't too great. Let me see if I can clear these out of the way, and we will take a look at the minifigures in a second. You get another angle of the Sarlacc. The Sarlacc's a bit disappointing because they build up the sand around it. It's a bit of a stronger build than last time, and that's definitely where most of the pieces from this set are going. In terms of playability, the last one had a little lever that you can open and close the mouth and it does still seem to have a lever with the tentacles moving but then there's just a bunch of sand bricks around and they've built it sort of coming up. They haven't even tried to slope into the Sarlacc so you can recreate scenes with the Lando that is included in this set. But we'll get on to minifigures in just a second. The actual Sarlacc could have had a little interior, they could have built it up if they are going to build it like it's coming out of the flat sand rather than a little reverse dune to slope down to it. They could have given it a little interior so you could put Boba in there like he's been eaten and that could also then work for when Boba breaks out of the Sarlacc because I'm pretty sure they've still got a book of Boba Fett Boba on shelves somewhere and you can break open the skiff where Lando falls. You can see these are built in on the old skiff. You can slide that across, it's on a hinge on the new one. That's a cool play feature and there's also a little diving board of sorts you can see in this image. I'll probably have to blow that up on screens for you. But there is similar to this one, I've actually removed mine so I will need to rebuild it. But there is a little board that you can push out for Luke to jump, do his acrobatics and then flip back, grab the lightsaber from R2. I really do love the scene. So it's nice we're getting another one. Absolutely no skiff guards or any personnel to be driving the skiff. And of course, Boba is on a separate skiff. So a lot of people were hoping we'd get two skiffs with this. For the size of the skiffs, they could have given us two skiffs. And I'm not quite sure what the price of this would be, but it's definitely going to be around the tentative. So we've got Luke, Chewie, Han, Lando, Boba... We could have got another one or two minifigures for the skiff guards and some personnel. Personally, I'd have dropped Hunt, I'd have dropped Chewie, and I'd also have dropped Boba because, we'll get onto it in a minute, they've given us Empire Strikes Bo Boba, who is available in a £12 mech. So, he really is a pointless character to be adding to this set. No offence to Boba Fett, I absolutely love the minifigure we got in that mech. But the more they give out a minifigure, the more it sort of loses its special charm. So replace Chewie, Han and Boba with perhaps two more skiff guards and then they can throw in a surprise minifigure from one of the other skiffs. And again, reduce the Sarlacc, give us the two skiffs and it would just make it that much better of a set, especially as they've reduced the skiff to begin with. But now we're looking at the minifigures. We get nine num in this. For me, is probably the only minifigure that I would want to pick up this set for. I said in the members discord that the Lando was pretty cool and when I said that I mainly meant the helmet because he does have tan trousers in the scene in the movie and he does have brown boots and a brown sort of flap around his waist so you can see why they've gone with the brown legs but I've already bought the old Lando skiff torso and created my own custom that I do think looks a bit better with a grey arms rather than black. So that helmet is really the only piece from the set that I'm interested in. In terms of the Boba Fett, we're getting the Empire Strikes Boba Fett, which is a really cool minifigure, there's no denying it. But all they needed to do was print the same arms and legs. I know canonically it might not have fit with the Return of the Jedi outfit. But from a toy perspective, all Lego needed to do was take the printing that they updated Print it on grey arms and grey legs, rather than the blue that we see in Empire Strikes Back. And that would have made an amazing Boba Fett. The old Return of the Jedi Boba Fett goes for crazy money now, the classic one. So if they gave us updated arm printing on a new one, that would have been really cool. Personally, for me, it wouldn't have made a difference because I already own that Firestar arm printing, which if you're looking for Return of the Jedi Great Arms Boba Fett arm printing, 
definitely head over and don't forget to use my code for 10% off. All information is in the description. And Luke Skywalker, he's got grey robes over his black. Lego does have a limited palette, so perhaps they couldn't distinguish between the black robes and that properly. But if you didn't know, I think he has a brown robe in the Jabba scene, and his robes do look a bit more grey in this scene, but they're just a different material that shows up. I think they show up a bit more navy on camera, if I'm honest. But it is meant to be a black material. They go over this in the behind the scenes for The Mandalorian, because they actually put him in the same costume for the Mandalorian. So we've already got Mandalorian Luke. I guess the big difference would be the fact that he has both his hands in this scene because it's before his robotic one is shot out on Jabba's sail barge. But an inaccurate Luke, an inaccurate Boba, we can't really fault them for Luke so much because the classic Lego Luke did have the grey robes. Perhaps they've just looked at giving us an updated minifigure based on that because they seem to be doing that quite a bit with minifigures like Jedi Bob. For 25 years of Star Wars, there's definitely more of an emphasis on Lego staying true to themselves rather than being accurate to Star Wars, which is fair enough, but from a Star Wars fan, this set isn't going to appeal as much unless you're looking at picking it up for the 9 num. But personally, I'm just going to wait until it's on Brick Out, on Brick Link, and try and find it the cheapest I can because this isn't a cheap set. And we do get a closer look at Nainam. We've already seen him in the trailer. I'm not sure what else there is to see. The head mold looks absolutely amazing. I guess we can finally see the head without Hera's Leku sticking out the back. But I think that looks hilarious in the screenshot I took from the trailer. The printing looks really, really cool. And I do like the black jacket with the red torso. It actually reminds me of, I think they were called Rebel Friend from the Complete Saga. So I can see some mocks made with that piece. But we see that the actual skiff itself does have three points to hold it up. It's got two bars on either end, I guess, to stop it bowing or something. And then it's got some more translucent bricks in the middle with a... It looks like it's got some sort of foot. It's a two by two round brick that then extends to a four by four, which I don't know if that's new in that color. The Sarlacc is a hefty build. Perhaps if you're looking at building a sandy slopey mock or some sort of Tatooine structure that might be useful for the parts but I think taking away from another skiff and giving us that big bulky Sarlacc pit that's one of the first things I took apart when I got this set I'm not really fussed about the Sarlacc because I can use my imagination you know just imagine it there without needing a build that takes up like two-thirds of the set's pieces so I wonder how cheap they could have made this set if they got rid of the Sarlacc. We got a few more images of the Sarlacc and the figures and you can see Luke is out on the plank at the minute. And then we move on to the set that I've been waiting for. We've got through the pretty cool C-3PO. We've got through the, I don't want to say bad, but the Desert Skiff really isn't my choice of sets. And now we've got to the really good Ahsoka Tano's Battle on Peridia. And this set is exactly what I'm talking about when I say I want a diorama that isn't a diorama. Similar to the Tantive. I'll continue to praise the Tantive and the Dark Trooper attack is the other one. For being a more accessible diorama, it's not too hard to make it into a diorama. If you are struggling, I've got instructions on the members discord and on Rebrickable. And I'll definitely be doing the same to this when I manage to pick it up. But the minifigures are absolutely amazing. Not only will this likely be, I don't see them charging more than 50. I'd be surprised if they try and charge 50 pounds for this when they've got sets like the Tantip up. Hopefully this is a 35 pound set. And once we get images on lego.com, I will confirm that for you August 1st. So stay tuned for that. But we get five minifigures rather than the two that we usually see on the dioramas. And there's a ton of play features as well. I'm looking and I can see already there are three round plates that will spin on the base of this, as well as right on the end, you can fling Ezra off into the Star Destroyer playset that is also going on sale August the 1st. And it does look really, really clean. There does seem to be a load of four by four I want to say printed. I want these to be printed pieces and 
looking at them there does seem to be a little similarity between some of them so perhaps they could get them done printed but the floor markings are definitely stickers but look at the characters that we get in the set it's a shame we're not getting an anniversary minifigure but i think they know that this set's going to be popular anyway some of the anniversary minifigures like the Leia in with the droids, Malak in with another R2-D2. I feel like I've just been put in there to convince more people to pick up the set that want the actual minifigures over the build. But this build and the minifigures are really, really cool. So first up, we've got Thrawn in his Imperial uniform with dual molded boots. He's got the white trousers with the black boots, which is really, really cool. It's, again, another piece on the pab wall because... That's where I picked it up for my Thrawn custom. And it can't really cost Lego too much to whack them in these sets. Hopefully we see it with other Imperial minifigures because they've also got the grey and the darker tan dual moulded legs. The Stormtrooper we get is a nice addition. I'd love to see a battle pack, but now I'm worried that the battle pack's going to include Enoch and make it less of an army builder for people that just want a load of these Night Sister Stormtroopers because... We're getting a regular Stormtrooper. They should have put Enoch in this set. I understand why they didn't. And maybe that's why also they left out Sabine and left out Shin Hati as well. There's only so much room they can put in. And getting a Trooper is really cool if they don't go on to do a battle pack. Which is why I think they've put the Trooper in here. Depending on how popular a minifigure it is will probably depend whether they work on a battle pack. And honestly if they haven't got one in the works right now. It's probably going to be too late unless they release one when we next see Thrawn. But Ahsoka, the white looks really, really cool. And yes, it's more of a light grey minifigure. But that is her robes in the show. The only reason she's Ahsoka the white is because of the white cloak she wears over it, which we initially saw at the end of Rebels. I really do like this Ahsoka minifigure. We're getting the grey one in the advent as well, which saves me a lot of money picking up that T6, though. I am going to have to find Marok somewhere because I really would like to complete my collection of Inquisitors. But I only have the custom one, so that's not happening anytime soon. We've also got the Ezra that we saw in the trailer so long ago. It's intriguing why they gave us the Ezra in the trailer and didn't give us the Ahsoka or the Thrawn or the Elsbeth. Perhaps they just wanted to include him from Rebels and use his updated design. And perhaps that was teasing more Ahsoka sets coming soon, which... Now we have the official images of Morgan Ellsworth. Looks really, really cool as well. Again, like her other figure, a simpler design, but they just get it across so, so well. And an updated face to have all the Night Sister markings. And actually, we're seeing the Dark Saber element in a trans green for her sword, which I've only just realised, and that looks really, really cool. I'm not sure if Ahsoka's blades are new, the trans clear element for the lightsabers. I feel like we've seen them quite a few times now in different sets. I feel like I could go on Brick Out Brick Link and order a few for not too much money. But all the minifigures are really, really nice. Ahsoka comes with arm printing once again. They really couldn't have left it out. But I will say I would have liked them to have the dual molded arms. The orange onto the white for the lower arm and then printed onto that. But perhaps they just can't print on dual molded arms. I'm not sure if we've seen any dual molded arm printing. But hopefully that's something we can see from Lego in the future. So we've got another image of them all displayed on it. It's nice to see how the minifigures have their own sections on the build. It's not segmented like a 4 plus style Lego set if you know what I mean. But at the same time you can display all five minifigures. And you could probably get your Sabine on there. If they ever do an Enoch you could get them on there. And a Shin Hati could definitely be added if you wanted to display your minifigures all together. You could probably even get Balin's skull on their fort display purposes, of course. Not talking about accuracy for this one. But they've each got their own area and they don't swamp the build. They don't close in on the other minifigures. There's so much space here and they've made a really good use of their parts, especially building out the front to cover the front round tile, which looks to be a similar piece to the one on the falcon actually no it doesn't it looks to have four round tiles around it so i think they are new pieces and i'll be very interested to finally get them to review on this channel the whole thing looks really really cool you can see a bit of a closer image perhaps not closer for you but again i will wipe this on screen so you can get a better look and you can see ezra being flung onto the star destroyer 
which you can also pick up August 1st with these. The minifigures for this one are amazing and I'm very happy they've gone with accuracy over reusing some other figures. If we can get a new Ahsoka the White instead of reusing the grey one that's in the T6 in the advent, how comes we can't get a new Boba Fair and certain minifigures like Luke, they go with Lego lore over accuracy. I'm really struggling to understand Lego scene all over the place this year, as well as the QTKT that they've put in the set that is seemingly a droid from nowhere. In fact, so is the Imperial Astromech. They seem to have used two droids just to fill gaps, and I'm not quite sure if LEGO have been sitting on these ideas for a while and they've just not put much more thought and effort into them and they're just older set ideas, or if they've just tried to get out a load of sets. I feel like there's not much thought into the actual project. The sets all look really, really cool and the designers have done a good job. I think the problem's actually in planning these sets, but let me know what you think of them down below. And if you do want to talk more about new sets as they come out, definitely consider becoming a member, joining the Discord, because I try to post these images over there as soon as I can, or at least a link to where you can find the images yourself. And in case you were interested in two other leaks that we've got, not Star Wars, I'll make this real quick. We've got an Emirates team, New Zealand, some sort of boat. And I do have to say, it looks massive compared to the person but I also think that it's a rendered image over a image they've just took of someone holding absolutely nothing because it doesn't look like they're actually interacting in the set. Their hands are behind the cells and the cells are only going to be a thin plastic piece. So I'm not quite sure this is actually in person and I think this is completely rendered. So hopefully they'll put this model and some of the others out in a Lego store on August 1st. So you can actually see how big they are before you purchase them. But the other set is a MIDI scale heli carrier. They're bringing the MIDI scales over to the Marvel line. And first off, I would love to see the three Guardian ships in this MIDI scale. It's actually something I was contemplating making a mock of when the MIDI scales come out for Star Wars. But I know you're mostly Star Wars fans watching this video. So if I turn to Marvel mocks, I didn't want to confuse most of my audience. Speaking of, the bonus videos were absolutely tanking the views on this video. The impressions were not only down to about 40%, but they were also then spread across to videos. So YouTube's algorithm thinks my videos have done amazingly, whereas in comparison, they just haven't really shared them. So if you haven't seen my other videos on the leaks, I'll leave them on the end screen once this video is done. So it is approaching four o'clock here in the UK. So it is approaching four o'clock here in the UK, and there's still no sign of any Jedi Bob Starship. Lego have confirmed it on the other two rebuild the galaxy sets that they come out they accidentally included it in the description they've actually removed that whole paragraph since so i don't so i'm not sure what's going on with my camera for some reason it's decided just to shut down twice but we'll try that again it's nearly four o'clock here in the uk still no sign of any jedi bob starship lego have already accidentally confirmed it on their other rebuild the galaxy post that whole paragraph has been since taken down i think i managed to get a screenshot so I should be able to show you but something that was pointed out by one of my members Soybean was on the Ahsoka Tano door which by the way these have now got official pages on lego.com we'll go over the prices in a second but for the Ahsoka set in particular they noticed that these giant columns here are actually stickers it's all stickers there are no printed pieces and when we get onto the price you'll see why that's a problem so starting off with the desert skiff and sarlacc pit you already know how i feel about that set 558 pieces so at least it's not going to be too expensive well that's what i thought but it's actually 70 pound which does feel very very pricey considering that most of the bricks don't look that big and a lot of them do go i guess you've got a lot of the bigger slopes and different wedge plates for the sarlacc but i don't see how people are going to be paying 70 pound it's just not a really good set i mean between luke having the wrong colored robes boba being from the completely wrong movie and the speed out of the skiff isn't even the size that it would be in relation to all the other Lego sets. It's not too minifigure scale or 
even that close. It's like 10 studs off it in length. I really don't see this being a popular set, but that might mean that the Luke, the Lando, I don't know if it is a new Han Solo. The old Han Solo was good enough, so hopefully Lego haven't updated printing unless it's been more efficient for them to do so. Chewie looks the same as the one we have been getting for, well, at least a decade, surely by now. It doesn't seem to have much, if any, updated printing. And you do get 9num. 9num doesn't affect the price, the cost of this. And when you're looking at these sets, the anniversary minifigures really don't justify some of the decision. But not only is this £70, Ahsoka's doll is also £50. And I did say this was sort of the maximum acceptable price, but 382 pieces, I think my £50 drops to £40 just based on the piece count alone. Five figures, £40 is still a good enough price for this and I would definitely recommend waiting for it to go on at least a 20% off in your local stores. I doubt we'll be seeing that from LEGO anytime soon. The only Star Wars sets we really get on sale are around Christmas sometimes, but mostly May 4th. So you're almost waiting another year to get this from LEGO as long as you're getting more than 10% off which is what LEGO would give you back in points during a double VIP weekend or a double Insiders points weekend. It's been Insiders for almost a year now and I still can't get my head around it's not called VIP points. But the most you're getting back is 5% during a usual weekend. Double points, 10%. If they ever do triple points, which I think there might have been a triple points on certain sets over May 4th and last year, that's a 15%. But I always say if you can get it 20%, it's a no-brainer. Don't wait for Lego and pick it up. 20%, 25%, 30%. If you can get any more money off on a Lego Star Wars set than 30% off, it's definitely worth picking up if you've got the money. And a few other sets have been added, like C-3PO, who was exclusive to this land speeder. It's like half the price to get him in the new C-3PO. This is the yacht that I was talking about earlier, as well as the Avengers helicarrier. And we've also got this Batman, which I thought was announced ages ago. First off, I really need to put my camera on charge because it is about to die. And if we do get images of the Jedi Bob ship, then I'll definitely need to pick back up my camera and tell you about it. But on the odd chance that we don't get any more images today, I probably won't be doing another video about it because I've done so many videos on all these leaks. I'll probably just upload it to the members Discord. And if you want to talk to me about it, consider becoming a member, trialing it for a month, only 99p. And I always upload any new set images and that to the Discord anyway. If you'd like to speak about non-Star Wars sets, that is also welcome. And there are a few other channels that might interest you. But that is all for today's video, I'm afraid. No Jedi Bob images in time if you are seeing this. Be sure to drop a like on this video before you head off and subscribe. Make sure you are subscribed before you leave. So you can come back, see all the other mocks and August 1st, I will be going over Jedi Bob if you aren't a part of the channel members. That is all for me today. Check out all the videos on your screen now and may the bricks be with you always.